a breathtaking Charlotte cake. It's so pretty. It's gorgeous. This is not good. I've struggled with my baking, so it's going to be a battle today. This gorgeous cake is the sum of several delicious but complex parts. The first component is the outer wall, constructed with sweet sponge cake ladies' fingers, crisp on the outside, but moist in the middle, and all of them perfectly uniform. The second component, a filling of rich and creamy mousse, perfectly whipped and smooth as silk. And finally, an even layer of fresh glaze. It's really, really hard. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm not a baker, but I need to prove to everyone that I really deserve to be in the top five. To prepare their mousse, they're gonna to have to whip their egg whites, they're gonna to have to whip their cream, they're gonna to have to blend those ingredients together, add the gelatin. I'm making a orange chocolate mousse. I wanna show the judges that I can put together different flavor combinations. I'm gonna make a white chocolate mousse. I'm relying on my flavors to get me through this pressure test. Matthew! Yes, Chef? Tell me about the flavors here. Uh, I'm doing a coconut uh, ladyfinger with a pistachio cake in the middle, and I'm doing a passion fruit mousse. Who's going home? Uh, today, I think either Sean or Jeremy are going home. Not you. Not me, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you, Chef. 20 minutes! You have 20 minutes left! Then they have the big process of building the Charlotte, putting the ingredients together. Just big enough. Making sure that the fingers align the mold. I'm uh, feeling the pressure, feeling the pressure. I don't, I don't have that much time left, and I have to get all these lady fingers uh, cut perfectly. Okay, let's see if we have enough. It's gonna be pretty tight. My lady fingers are sticking together. I kind of think that that might be a good thing. One of the big issues with making a Charlotte is that you have to get your lady fingers so tight together that the mousse and the glaze can't spill through the cracks. But I'm worried about the amount I have. I don't think he has enough. They're nice and tight. Line up, soldiers. Does he have enough? Ooh, we have enough. We have enough. We have enough. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I got to put it into high gear and get this cake finished. You have 10 minutes left. Really low on time. It's freaking me out right now. Now they can work on their glaze. I need to make it look really, really pretty. I know my glaze tastes good, but I know that too much glaze can really affect the structural integrity of my dish. OK, good. The moment of truth. I see that the glaze has run through the lady fingers. I had just one spoon too much. There goes my presentation. Pick it up, guys. One minute, you have one minute left. Come on, one minute, everything on. Sean, that looks great. Come on, guys. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, run, Sean, run. 3, 2, 1. Oh, Chef. Hello, Jeremy. Tell me the flavors of your Charlotte cake, please. It's uh, orange chocolate mint Charlotte, garnished with candied cereal and candied mint. Wow, beautiful. Well, look, the outer row of the lady's fingers looks pretty decent. Any worries about me removing this piece of ribbon? No. So what I want to see is a nice, clean cut. That mousse just sits there nicely, has a little jiggle to it, mm. but you can see the layers. Let's see. This is so damp. <laughs> it looks wonderful. A decent layer of mousse in between, another layer of the cake. Looks pretty good. Thank you, chef. That's up the game, fellas. Now it's down to flavors. Yeah. The mousse, beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful, soft, fluffy. The immediate hit that I get is chocolate. Then that mint starts to come around. The piece that I don't get is the orange. I think you needed a little bit more orange just to punch through. Overall, it's a solid Charlotte cake. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Jeremy. 
Dr. Sean, tell me what it is. It's a caramel toffee pecan charlotte. The mousse is a white chocolate Bavarian mousse and then a dark chocolate glaze on top. They seem to be stuck together. In the end, I thought that that would actually help out with structural integrity. And it's, it, it, you can see, because your lady's fingers are so wide, it's actually very difficult for me to cut a reasonable size. So I'm just going to cut it here, OK? How will this hold? Look at that. I think it's probably a little bit too soft. It's sloping downward a bit. Maybe there's not enough gelatin. So let's see how it tastes. Tastes pretty good. This thing is so rich. You got two different chocolates. You got the caramel, you got the pecan. I think it tastes better than it looks, but would that be enough to keep you in? Look at all the glaze coming through here. I'm surprised. This almost looks like child's play. <sighs> what happened? I added way too much glaze, and uh, it just seeped through. Tell me about the flavors. So I made a tropical Charlotte. It's a uh, passion fruit mousse, coconut ladyfingers. Are you worried with what's going to happen when I remove this ribbon? Yes, chef. You are really worried. I can see it. Moment of truth, Matthew. Oh my god. <laughs> the mousse looks like a cloud. There's a lot riding on the flavor of this Charlotte. Yes, yeah, Chef. If it doesn't taste good, Matthew, I don't think you have a hope. I know that, Chef. The flavor's amazing. That pistachio sponge is the perfect thickness, but I've seen you do better. I know I can do better, Chef. Anyone see gold powder? Birthday cakes are what inspired me to start baking. I know with this dish, I'm going to wow the judges. Making a layer cake is more difficult than it sounds. There's a lot that can go wrong. If you don't cream your eggs and your butter properly, you're going to have raw patches of flour. Everything has to be incorporated to have a nice, light, and airy cake. John, can I have one of your bananas? I don't enjoy cake. Favorite desserts as a child was going for banana splits, so I'm, I'm actually going to make a banana split cake. Got to get this moisture out of here. The first cake I ever loved was a red velvet cake, but I love blue suede shoes more than I love red velvet cake, so I'm making a blue suede shoe velvet cake. I met my girlfriend wearing blue suede shoes for the first couple of months. She'd only call me blue suede shoes. I'm making chocolate cake for my dad. I think it's going to be the most beautiful cake of the bunch. Now, there's a lot of inspiration here being drawn by family. I'm going to make banana nut cake. This is for my sister. She makes the best banana bread in the world, and I never get to make her a birthday cake. I've always been gone playing football, so this is for her. I'm making a mint chocolate birthday cake. It's my husband's favorite. I'm not the uh, strong cake guy, but I'm going to make a chocolate cake with peanut butter. My son's JJ's favorite two ingredients. My birthday is Christmas Day. I usually reach for a generous slice of apple pie with ice cream on top. So I'm uh, basically making this cake as a play on the apple pie, and hopefully they like what I uh, present today. What do you think has the advantage in this competition? I'm going to say Tammy, number one, because uh, she has six kids and uh, baking birthday cakes sounds like it's almost a full-time job in that house. I am making a white cake, and it is my daughter's birthday. My daughter loves strawberries, and I'm going to decorate it with a lot of flowers. She loves flowers. It's kind of heart-wrenching for me, because it's the first birthday I've missed in 17 years. What about Christopher, though? He seems to be really confident, very well, confident. Well, Christopher, you know, the pastry man. I'm making my variation on an opera cake. It is a mixture of chocolate and coffee. It's a cake that I started in high school and has slowly been built up over the years by techniques that I've learned. Oh, where, where's the piping bags? 
I love a great cake, nice and moist, tasty, but it's the icing I look forward to. The beauty of having icing is that you can actually cover a lot of your mistakes. It's a baker's trick they don't know never happened. Michael. Hello, Chef Alvin. So you're doing the blue suede, blue velvet? Honestly, it looks like blue carpet. Definitely will not taste like carpet. What are you doing? So I'm gonna alternate between uh, cream and blueberry filling so that the blueberry filling isn't too rich. So you're gonna do four layers in this thing? I'm gonna try. Is that all the cream you're gonna put in? Oh, I can put more if you like. You know, when you cut it up, you wanna see the layers. I wanna see nice thick layers because it makes the cake rich and delicious. You got it, Chef. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. You know, David's cake looks absolutely amazing. He handles that spatula like a pro. Well, it's very similar to concrete. It is like traveling. My secret weapon is the fact that I am a talented concrete guy. Hi there, Christopher. Hello, Chef. That's a beautiful technique there. Where did you learn that? Years and years of experience. What else are you going to do now to finish the decoration on this cake? Chocolate curls. And you're tempering the chocolate to get the curls? That's right, because otherwise they won't have big, nice curls. Wow, that's amazing. I'll let you carry on. Thank you, Chef. One minute! Oh, no. You don't have much time, actually, though. I'm gonna make this work no matter what. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Ooh. one. Hands off your cake. Tonight, the judges are choosing two mystery box winners. This is the best cake that I've ever made. I think I nailed it. Both will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. What I'm most proud of is I was able to channel being a dad on this cake. Today, we've been so impressed with your creations. We're going to be calling up four of you. I'm at least one of the four going up. I have to be. The first cake that we want to call up was made by a home cook who honored this challenge with innovation and color. This cake looks like a soccer field. I just wish the judges would try it. Please come up to the front. Michael. Whoa! I'm cooking cakes, baby. I'm cooking cakes! This is a blue suede cake with blueberry filling, a little bit of lemon zest, some graham crackers on the side to give a little bit of texture and taste. And I topped it off with some very fine sugar sprinkles. So when I cut through a cake, what I want to see is all the layers all connected. I don't want to see any air pockets in between the icing and the cake. Is that what I'm going to see here? I think so. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Thank you, Chef. Well, let's try this. It's a very good cake. It's so moist. I love the blueberry that's running through here. It looks like the kind of cake you would buy in a, in a bake shop. Great job. Just go to the front. The second cake we'd like to see was made with a level of technique and confidence that was nothing short of breathtaking. And that cake belongs to Christopher. Please bring up your cake. This cake really shows off who I was and who I am now. Today, I've done an opera cake, coffee praline buttercream, ganache between the layers, and it's layered all on top of a chocolate sponge. Wow. This is a league of its own. My mouth is watering right now. Thank you, Chef. It all oozes out between the layers. It tells me that it is a, such a soft and delicate pastry cream. Beautifully balanced. Big hit of chocolate up front. A touch of that coffee comes in. And then just a slight crunch from the praline that you pureed up. For me, it's best in class. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Chocolate hits you, and then the coffee comes. And after that, textures of the hazelnut. Definitely one of the best cakes I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. I'll be happy for you to do my birthday cake. Please stand down the front. The third cake we like to see was inspired by a loved one. Please come up. David. 
the chocolate birthday cake, Philadelphia cream cheese peanut butter uh, layers, and then I covered the whole thing with pretzels and the roasted peanuts. It's my little boy's birthday today, so I put everything into it. It's really hard to get a cake that perfect. Rigid, smooth construction. You got the peanut butter, you got the cream cheese, all these comfort things that your son loves. This cake is about love. Thank you. Beautifully cooked sponge, enough sweetness, a little saltiness from the peanut and pretzels. In fact, that flavor is, is quite sophisticated and you can't go wrong with peanut butter. Top marks all around for a stunning cake. But when it comes to spelling? Yeah, I'm not known for my spelling. I think that says hap. It made us all very hap. <laughs> Baking. Baking is not for a special occasion. Baking is for like Tuesday evening, I'm home from work and I want a cupcake. I love croissants, my mom loves croissants. So I'm making kind of a take on a, an almond croissant, but in cake form. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cook with a ton of heart. My parents mean everything to me. They're my biggest supporters, so I'm not gonna let them down. It's a kind of a big deal and I'm putting some things on hold in terms of medicine and I was kind of not expecting them to support me as much as they would, but they're so awesome that they just did. My father absolutely loves key lime pie, so I'm gonna reinvent the key lime pie and make it into a cake. 30 minutes! You have 30 minutes left! My dad loves green tea, and my mom loves chestnut cream. So I'm gonna mix the two together and make a matcha roll cake. It's decorated at the batter level, and I don't think the judges have ever seen anything like it. What I'm about to do is practically impossible in an hour. I'm not sure I can do it, but that's what my dad taught me to do. Shoot for the stars, try your hardest, and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm not gonna play it safe. The judges have accused me of not cooking from the heart on numerous occasions, and I'm gonna prove them wrong. I'm finally baking. Terry. Hi, Chef. Look at that smile. I know, I love baking, and it's great to have a baking challenge. So tell me, how much inspiration are you getting right now from your sister? Oh, I'm getting a lot of inspiration from my sister. She's also an amazing baker, and we bake a lot, and we baked these cheesecakes together before. Cheesecake? So, yeah, I'm making cheesecake three ways. Three cheesecakes? I am doing three cheesecakes. In 60 minutes? In 60 minutes, because I believe I have something to prove. All right, I'm excited. Thank you, Chef. Last 10 minutes, it's all about the finishing touches. It's the filling, it's the stuffing, it's the layering of the icing. Mary right now has that laser beam focus. I need to show the judges that I'm the best baker here. <laughs> I want the judges to see that even though I'm not much of a baker, that I can still hold my own. I'm gonna go with as many layers as I can. I want this cake to be really high. I don't want it to fall over. Ha <laughs> ha it's cold! <laughs> I got it! <laughs> One of the most difficult Japanese desserts that I executed it in an hour! Hey, Perle, you, you doing good? Oh, wow, that looks amazing. It's no Japanese roll cake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, freak. Look at that. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> It's a Japanese matcha roll cake with the chestnut cream in the center. It is impressive. Thank you, chef. I don't even know how to do these patterns myself, I'll be honest, I don't know how you pull that off. It's extraordinary. <laughs> Thank you, chef. There's a perfect balance between the chestnut cream and the green tea and that white chocolate crunch, outstanding. Thank you, Chef. Extremely light, and the sponge is incredibly moist. Did you do anything to the sponge to make it so moist? No, I just have a good recipe, and the base cell helped out. Extraordinary presentation, technique. I can't find anything to fault on this. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. My dad would be ecstatic to see me now. He would be so proud. The second home cook whose dish we'd like to taste tapped into their passion for baking and plated a beautiful dessert. Terry, please bring up your dish. I am thinking about my sister as I walk up with my dish because I know she's going to be very proud of this moment. 
So I've got three different types of cheesecakes on the dish. I've got a raspberry cheesecake, a lemon cheesecake, and a milk chocolate cheesecake. The presentation to me is absolutely beautiful. Between the simple piping, the tuxedo dressed dipped strawberries, the feather work on top of the chocolate, a lot of different technique. Yes, chef. I put all I had into this cheesecake. It all comes down to taste though, Terry. Yes, chef, it does. Terry, it has got that rich, creamy, but ever so ultra smooth filling. That crisp lemon just cleans it up nicely as you chew through it. And then you've got that wonderful crisp base to it. Thank you, chef. Your sister would be very proud. It's nice. Thank you, Chef. It's light. The crust is perfect, nice and crunchy. You got the nice ratio of crust and cream cheese. And of course, it looks good. Well done. Thank you, Chef. I feel on top of the world. The third home cook we're calling up didn't let their lack of baking experience hold them back for one second. And that home cook was... Sean. Please bring your dish up. I'm super happy. My dad would love this cake. This one's for you, Dad. It's a layered key lime cake covered with a Swiss meringue and torched, and then just a little lime zest. That's a pretty impressive looking dessert. Thank you very much, Chef. The kind of thing as a little kid you'd want to stick your finger in and just take a big lick, right? Now let's see what it happens when we cut this open. Mission accomplished. You've got that meringue that is very soft, that sponge cake, wonderful moist, but has a little flavor from the lime, which cleans it up really nicely. It's got it all going on. Thank you. Kaboom. It's awesome. That lime zest just jumps out. The cake is beyond moist. Take a look at that. What you achieved. Definitely proud. I hope my parents are too. I couldn't be happier with myself. I wish I could save a piece of this cake for my dad. Three words. Black forest cake. Oh. So Chef Michael pulls out this luxurious, like glorious black forest cake. Like the thing just looked immaculate. This is a replication challenge and you're going to have to recreate this highly elevated version of a classic dessert. I have never made a cake like this before in my life. That means four layers of perfectly executed chocolate sponge infused with kirsch syrup, a layer of chocolate ganache in the middle, delicate yet decadent mousseline cream, fresh Marillo cherries soaked in kirsch and topped with chocolate curls. I have never baked a black forest cake before, so, okay. <laughs> oh, that smells good. The mousseline is basically a pastry cream base that's had lots of extra butter whipped into it, so it is light, creamy, but very rich. You could make the ganache before the pastry cream because it too needs to cool down and that has to go in the center of the cake. You only have 80 minutes. That's not a lot of time. So you gotta multitask. Get the pastry cream going. Mike's flying. Get the ganache going. Go, 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 go. Look at those moves. Double-handed. <laughs> Come on, baby. The home cooks are fighting for their lives in a difficult Black Forest Cake replication challenge. Oh, he just dropped, he just dropped. And Kagan is in the woods. Right now, I'm not handling the pressure well, and I am no longer going to be able to make a four-layer cake. But I'm not ready to go home. I never thought I would be here. It's a dream come true. I have three layers left. Buttercream is sweet, the ganache is sweet. Let's make something tasty for the judges. I'm glad to see that you're uh, pushing on. Tell me what happened. I didn't put any sugar in my cake. How have you tried to remedy I this? I tried to add a little sugar to the cake. As a sugar syrup? 
It's not a bad idea. Well, as long as it's not too wet, it could hold together. Is the cake itself nice and cold? Because your pastry cream is starting to soften already. This cake is too hot, so I put them in the chiller. They have less than eight minutes left. At this stage, all of the cooks should be placing their cakes on the pedestal and starting to assemble their Black Forest cake. But if you assemble on this turntable and then try and lift onto the pedestal, you could be in trouble. I look behind me and everyone is a step behind. So Reem is ahead now in the assembly process. What a comeback. Not getting eliminated. My cake just crumbled into a bunch of chunks. Those two sponge cakes were so wet with syrup, it just started to fall apart. I kind of feel like throwing in the towel. Just don't give up. Please, don't give up. She's right. I didn't come here to give up. I have one layer of cake left, but I feel pretty confident I'm going to be able to get the flavors right on this cake. You know, flavor is king. It could save me. Five minutes, you have five more minutes left. Five minutes, OK? Five minutes. I get up to my fourth layer, and I'm thinking, I still have this on my, my decorating table here. I need to get this on my plating dish. It's too heavy. Like, this thing is just going to crumble. This is so uncomfortable to watch. Oh, my lord. Yeah! <laughs> Good job, wow. Mikey. Incredible. Oh, my god. It worked. Look at this. The last one to get the cake in is the first one to bring the cake to the front. coming up. Wow. What a turn of events. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and tap. Oh, my god. Good job, guys. Good work. <laughs> I can't believe I finished. This was not an easy challenge. And now it's time to see how you did. Reem, I should mention that your cake is a little bit different from the others. You use maraschino cherries, and we allowed you to use this ingredient because you don't consume alcohol. Is it perfect? Not quite. No. But overall, it's incredibly inviting. Wow. Let's try this and see how it tastes. You know, Reem, if you take a closer look here, Look at the cake here. I hate to tell this to you, but it's raw. It's half-baked. You see that? I can be going home because my cake is undercooked. Michael G. Chef Michael. I can't help but notice on your T-shirt it says, stay positive. Are you feeling positive about this cake? Yeah, I am very positive about my cake. Good. Is there anything that you don't like about it? Uh, it's definitely off balance. You've masked the sides reasonably well, although there are lots of voids. I gotta cut a little slice and have a taste. Look at that. So you've been able to create defined, clear layers in your Black Forest cake. But the final taste test is yet to be done. Rich, succulent, pretty much textbook. Thank you, Chef. Stay positive. I must say, 
This cake looks almost perfect. The moment of truth. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That is perfection. Thank you, Chef. That's very nice because the cake is perfectly moist. The muslin cream, it's light, it's tasty, it's rich. Thank you. The ganache, good consistency. Are you here to stay? Yeah, I'm here to take this all the way to the end. That's why I'm here. Well, I believe you. Watch out, watch out. Kagan, Chef Claudio. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm impressed that you got to this point because I thought for a moment there you were gonna throw the towel in and just give up. What do we call this? We call this humble pie? <laughs> I called it uh, budget cake. Budget cake. Yeah, can't all afford layers. I've gotta tell you, in terms of flavor, this is actually the tastiest cake I've had here. I mean it. What? <laughs> it's balanced. I like the fact that there's not a lot of sugar in the cake because there's already a lot of sweetness happening on top of it. It's actually very balanced. You might be onto something. Thank you. Baked Alaska, a majestic classic that when conquered is truly the mark of a master chef. What? I have no idea what it is. The base is a moist, airy layer of sponge cake, brushed with the essence of a syrup or liqueur. The center of the dessert is a dome of rich ice cream. Surrounding the sponge and ice cream is thick, pillowy meringue, browned to perfection. Why don't you come up and take a look? I literally think it's a joke because I don't even think it's possible. The trick to baked Alaska is making sure that whilst it's baking in a fiercely hot oven, that the ice cream doesn't melt. The meringue acts as an insulation. The right amount of thickness of that meringue is essential. Sponge, ice cream, and meringue married into one luxurious presentation. On the meringue, not the easiest of things to make, separating those egg yolks from the white, making sure there's no contamination, because if you get a bit of that egg yolk into it, it is not gonna become light and fluffy. Adding the right amount of sugar and then beating it so it is nice and stiff and easy to work with. That's the key, it has to be stiff so that it creates an insulation around that ice cream. It's time to put my meringue on my cake, so I start throwing it on. It looked like abstract art. I'm pretty good at culinary engineering. Uh, when it comes to constructing things, you pretty much have to slop a bunch of meringue on and just even it out, smooth it out, and take a spoon and start dolloping to get those nice peaks. You have five minutes. Start baking your Alaska. When I put it in the oven, I'm actually a little bit proud that I've actually pulled this off. My ice cream is solid, and my meringue is perfect. I put my baked Alaska in the oven. I feel like I'm a little bit out. Everyone's doing awesome, but Kayla is behind everybody. A little bit worried about Kayla right now. She's got to get her baked Alaska in the oven. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Kayla's got the torch going. That's probably a smart idea. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough time, just fucking sear it. That's what I would do. Yeah, so my meringue isn't crisping up as much as I would like it to, so I'm just going to blow towards the top of it really quickly. Don't know what it will do to the meringue, but it looks pretty. Nice. Very smart, Kayla. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up! Great job. Great job, guys. Great job. Great job. Time is up, and I'm definitely worried. My baked Alaska look like an igloo, but a really ugly igloo. Please bring your baked Alaskas up to the front to be tasted. Compared to the beginning, I definitely thought I was going home. Taking out my baked Alaska, I think I have a pretty good chance of winning this. I know inside this meringue, my ice cream is soft. Right now, I'm not hoping to be the best. I'm hoping somebody screwed up more than I did. Now the judges will taste each baked Alaska and decide which cooks stay 
and which cooks will leave the Master Chef Canada kitchen once and for all. Hey, Rick. Come on, Chef. I tell ya, cuts beautifully. Sponge, nice and fluffy. Meringue, nicely crisp. That cake, to me, is beautiful. You tell me you cannot make dessert, eh? That doesn't say it. You tend to underrate yourself. Sometimes, you have to pat yourself on the back. Hey, Chef. Eric. Chef. Mm. It is very good. Thank you, Chef. Now, the key to cupcakes is the perfectly moist and fluffy base. The icing should be flavorful, light, creamy, and beautiful. In the equipment room, you will find a specialty pantry full of ingredients that will spark your imagination. We want to see creativity, innovation, and variety. And to make things even more challenging, we want your 24 cupcakes to feature at least three different flavors. This challenge is crazy. I'm glad that I'm not down there. You will have just 90 minutes to make us a cupcake power to keep you in this competition. I'm not a good baker. I need more like 90 days, not 90 minutes. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 90 minutes starts now. I'm not gonna have time to fuss around with four different batters and add flavors into each batter. If I just stick with one base, stick with chocolate, my girls love chocolate. We're not looking for a bake sale cupcake. We're looking for a cupcake that is sophisticated, creative, you can actually give them that opportunity to really stand out. I see red wine. Why not put red wine in a red velvet cupcake? What you doing, what you doing? Red wine and cupcakes might be really weird. I'm hoping that won't hurt me. The wine? Yeah. I have trouble with the concept of it, but it's it's very innovative. It's risky. Oh. I have celiac. I'm not gonna be able to taste my batters. I'm just gonna have to go off sight and smell. Jacqueline. Hi, Chef. How comfortable are you with baking? It's not what I usually do, but I'm feeling okay. So you have the confidence? I think I do. You think you do? I Ooh. think I do. I'm not convinced. I know. Are you convinced? Not. I'm not really convinced. You got to believe in yourself. Without confidence, you won't go very far. Yes, thank you. OK. Five minutes. Better start decorating. Vince could be the first one out of the gate with his decorating. Colors look fun. The piping requires a fine hand, a little finesse, in order for it to look absolutely beautiful. And then you can just put the finishing jewels to it to make it really stand out and look special. Damn, the shaky hands. My hands, they're so sweaty, I can't grip the piping bag properly. This is ridiculous. I'm very worried about Jacqueline. Ah. Uh... 30 seconds left. Come on, Come let's on, get guys. it on. You can do it. Oh, my god. I'm going to drizzle a little chocolate on these. Look at the meringue on Mary's cupcake. It's absolutely beautiful. <sighs> Keep going. To the buzzer, right to the end. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and go! Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Good job. I'm getting a little emotional because my cupcakes didn't quite hit that spot where I wanted them. Well done. This was not an easy challenge. And now it's time to see how you did. Jacqueline, please bring up your cupcake tower. This cupcake tower is what separates me from winning and being an accountant. I don't want to go home. The purple ones are a lavender-infused cupcake with vanilla Swiss buttercream. The yellow is a lemon cupcake with a lemon buttercream. And the red wine velvet cupcake with a cream cheese icing, toasted walnuts, and crumble on the top. 
Red wine is something I've never seen in a cupcake, so this is the first for me. This is absolutely delicious. <laughs> I love the innovation. Do you know the history of red velvet cake? The original one was made with red beets. And the red wine, it's a perfect replacement because I get that spiciness, earthiness. Now, they're little flaws. These little tiny crumbs, I don't think it really needs it. It makes it look dirty. Overall, I love it. The lavender. My least favorite herb is lavender. So this has to be pretty sensational. I'm just hoping it's not too perfumey when you eat it. This is a very sophisticated cupcake. Really well balanced. What does this mean to you? It means that I actually have a chance to make my dreams come true. I think you have a lot of doubt. I saw it happening when you were cooking. I think sometimes when something this great happens that it can't really actually be happening because I've never really had things easy. Unless you start believing you're not going to get very far. I mean, accountants don't usually make beautiful tower of cupcakes like this. Please go back to your station. I didn't realize that at first, but I do think that this competition for me is more than just cooking. I just can't picture myself sitting in an office. I want to be here. Mary, please bring up your cupcakes. It's really important for me to do well. I don't want to let the judges down. Walk me through it. A s'more cupcake with a chocolate sponge flavored with a bit of vanilla and a Swiss meringue on top. Over here, mocha and a Swiss buttercream. And then a coconut cupcake with a little bit of lime zest. That's the one I'm going to try. Look at that. It is absolutely delicious. Beautiful, big, crispy coconut flakes. The lemon gives it a little bit of freshness. I think the appearance is monochromatic. They need a little bit of color. I love marshmallow, so that's the one I'm going to try. Earthy, dark chocolate. Perfect. Thank you so much.